See, does, does that make sense? That's sort of the representation of what we're doing? Yeah. Oh, it's, oh it's composition number. One nine, yeah. Well, Taylor, can you talk a little bit about what we chose about the ghost transfer? Can you talk a little bit about that? And yeah, absolutely. Um, what I'm excited about what we've been able to do um, is rather than uh, choosing one 20 minute piece that we would sort of perform as is and polish up and make sort of perfect in a one week rehearsal period, um, is to really represent Anthony's musical system, which is something that is always evolving and always changing. The Ghost Trance music, which he started actually in the 90s, he consciously designed as a ritualistic music, music as he describes it, without a beginning or without an end, that an ensemble enters into as a means of moving between different compositions and improvisational strategies. Um, so you have the primary material that's presented that the ensemble is dealing with, um, but it can split into small ensembles or individuals to explore materials on their own. chose one piece that was written for brass quintet, one piece that was written for a 10-piece chamber ensemble, one piece that's written for a 25-piece orchestra, um, three structures for small ensemble, um, and then also worked on Anthony's system of conducted improvisation, his language music, and a whole set of sort of improvised uh, uh, gesture, gestures to, to lead an ensemble through a structured improvisation. It's really like, here is a playground that all of us can enter into. All of us can be leaders and be led. All of us can be, make choices as a section leader, make choices as an individual improviser, or be happy being a performer following someone else's lead. And the fact that those roles are always switching, I think is very true to his system, the same way that the roles of composition and improvisation are always switching. <laughs> It's, it's really a music about uh, creative fluidity, you know, and using, using this system that he's built as a means to explore an ensemble's identity, your own identity as an individual within that ensemble, the body of music as an external device. to start with one of his earlier ghost trance pieces, mm -hmm. one of the first species, what they call, which is where the whole ensemble starts out basically with the same pulse. Yes. It's really fascinating to follow the evolution of it because it really did start out as music, sort of endless music, these sort of endless streams of quarter notes, even though each piece really does have different identities. So some pieces are very intervallic, some pieces, the one that we're doing has sort of more note repetition in it, some pieces have more slurs or different articulations, but ultimately, at the beginning, all the ghost trance pieces had this do 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 So then the second species of ghost trance, all of a sudden these rhythmic interruptions start happening. So you have do 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 And then by the third species, there's more and more rhythmic interruptions. And then by the end, he had this, what he called accelerator class, where all it is is rhythmic interruptions. So, you know, And so I just gave you guys a new piece of that that we're going to sight read today in front of people for fun. I, but it's, it's ultimately, it's interesting, that you, so, so it became more and more rhythmically complex, but it was still a representation of the same idea. It's the whole ensemble going to, doing this thing in, together in this sort of almost either simplistic or impossible rhythmic unison, but the same idea that, it, the, the trance music idea, you know, that we're all going to enter into this space and just do our best, and then where that leads us, whether through simplistic repetition or through the 
impossibility of complex rhythms, both of those end you, sort of put you in another space. And then once you're in that other space, you've left the regular world behind and you're ready to explore. And then you dive in, then you can start diving into the other compositions, diving into the improvisations, diving into the smaller sections, making other choices. <laughs> It should both sound like Braxton music, but sound like the Music Fabrique realization of it and the imprint that only Music Fabrique could make. And that's what becomes, I think, very exciting in the, in the collaboration between his compositional vision and your guys' ensemble, you know, identity and virtuosity and, 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 and you know, interests. And it has been amusing. It's been, it's been fun. fun. It's I know, been it's been super fun. fun. People just sitting and <laughs> chilling. And... Let's see the hourglass comes in handy. Yeah, yeah, should we be done? Or, gee, yeah. any, that was killer. Take a break. Any questions before break? Everyone feel good? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys. That was just gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> I know. It's almost harder to be inside the ensemble than the outside because when you're outside, you hear the things happening. When you're inside, you're kind of in that space and you don't, can't actually hear the It's surprising how, uh, in this setting, how uh, transparent it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's never. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's about Anthony's. Yeah, that's the thing. That the, the communication that my like my mother likes. Like my mother likes coming to see Braxton shows, even though she doesn't like experimental music. She, most of my stuff, she's like, that's too weird, Taylor. But the Braxton show she loves because the communication is so clear. Like the yeah. fact that the people are talking. And to the each puzzled other. looks are the most amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. What do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man.